Okay, so this is Dr. Ali Ate, and he's confessing that he's not going to debate any longer. He's a scholar, and he understands Hebrew, Greek, and Arabic, and he seems really knowledgeable, but he's come to the conclusion that he's been debating Christians for now for a long time, and now he says that he's given it up, that he says that the Hadith says not to, to even sit down with these people, the Christians who are against Islam, who don't believe in Islam and the Prophet Muhammad, he's actually going against the scriptures of the New Testament. In Jude 3, it says, Dear friends, although I was eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. So the Bible, New Testament says to contend for the faith. It's a wrestling term. It actually means to confront others uh, strongly disagree when they teach false teaching. So let's listen to Dr. Ali Ate and his reasons why he's given up debating. I kind of think there's an alternative motive why he quit debating. These people are mustahzion, right? And it's, it's impermissible for us to even sit with them. You know, a mustahzi is someone who mocks and ridicules the religion, who mocks and ridicules the Prophet We're not even supposed to give them a platform. Don't even just completely ignore them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَفَى نَا What does he say? وَكَفَى But the mustahzin. Allah says, I will suffice you with respect to the mustahzin. In other words, I'll take care of them. Like Abu Jahal and Abu Lahab. Right? Um, 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 there's a few, seven or eight of them that were known. All of them, all of them were killed in Adam, or they died from disease. So uh, Dr. Ali is confusing us. So is he going to debate them and Allah take care of them, or not debate them and Allah take care of them? You know, so I, I wouldn't engage, I would be very discriminatory as to who you engage with. Even if you're claiming to be Christian and they come to you with smiles and this and that, and you know, I, I learned my lesson the hard way. And then the next day at the event, he had three other debaters. So it's like a four against one. And two of these guys were like fluent in Arabic and they knew like Quran and Hadith and everything. I mean, still won. I mean, come on. So four against one and he still won uh, against people who spoke Arabic? How is that possible? And then you're not going to debate anymore? If this is so easy, why don't you keep doing it? We took care of business, you know? And I remember the MSA was panicking. They're calling, we're trying to get this local imam to come help you. I said, relax, brother. <laughs> the Ak will win. <laughs> Almost sounds like a little mockery going on. That's a little hypocritical, don't you think? And then uh, it was just a... Uh, but it got, it got to a point, because they were losing, it got to a point where this man, who's, who's a, he's, a Coptic, um, he's a Coptic priest, he became belligerent and started slandering the Prophet And at that point, we, we can't, you know, you know, lesson learned, right? But you're right, it's the same issues, you know, they're bringing up you know, marriages of the Prophet and... I think Muhammad's marriages need to be explained when Asha was married at age six, and then after the Battle of Kabar, Muhammad had the treasurer killed, and then noticed the treasurer had a pretty wife. And then Muhammad gave her an option to marry him or become captured slave for his Muslim soldiers. She chose to marry Muhammad. That is kind of strange and needs to be explained. And remember, he's supposed to be a prophet of God. And it could be my imagination, but Dr. Ali does look like he's a little hot under the collar at this point. They bring up uh, the fact that the Prophet Sallam was uh, a military leader, and, and all of this is hypocrisy. Where's the hypocrisy? I don't understand that, because what would you argue about Muhammad being a military leader? It doesn't make sense. I mean, if you look at, the, if you look at all of the casualties in every battle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Hassan al-Nandawi, rahimahullah, he, did, he actually did a study on this and he said there's about 1,018 casualties in all of the Ghazawat of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Enemy and Muslim, Mushrikeen and Muslims, 100, 1,018 men in 23 years. All men on the battlefield. This death count is total lie. A thousand eighteen men. It can't be true. There was three thousand men that were killed in the Battle of Muta. So if I check the forty-two battles and excursions that Muhammad was in, we see that there was at least fifty-one thousand casualties. And so uh, Dr. Ali is way off, and he's just doing lying. Without lies, Islam dies. So a lot of it, sort of, you know, smoke and mirrors. 
It's the same stuff regurgitated. I don't find any strong arguments coming from the Christian side. Oh, maybe if that was true, if there was no strong arguments on the Christian side, he'd still be debating. But of course, there's a lot of strong arguments. There's where you can't find any instance of Ishmael being in the test of Abraham before 600 AD. You can't find the word Muslim used any Hebrew text before 600 AD. And you can't find the word Allah being used in any Hebrew text before 600 AD. Those three proofs, I'd like to leave Dr. Ali Ate with this Bible verse in Isaiah 1, 18. It says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be like scarlet, they will be white as snow. Though they be as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. So I pray that uh, Dr. Ali Ate would uh, understand these arguments against Islam and come to Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.